So, you want to build yourself a rock garden? Well, congratulations, because you're about to embark on the most tedious journey there is in Animal Crossing. You prepared? You ready? Alright, let's get it. Step one, you're going to want to design your rock garden. You're going to want to plan out exactly where you want it. And this is huge, because if you don't plan it right, you're going to have to do all of this all over again. And trust me, I've been there. You don't want to do that. Now in planning your rock garden, you gotta make sure you have the island designer tool and you gotta get yourself familiarized with the different types of ground surfaces there are. And there are the dark dirt path, the sand path, the dirt path, and the grass path. Now these paths are diggable and these can be placed under a rock to create beautiful scenes and they do not interrupt rock spawning which will be useful later. For the other paths, we have the solid ones that are non-diggable. And these paths include the wooden path, the brick path, the stone path, the terracotta tiles, and the arched tile path. All right, now that we're familiarized with the different types of paths, I'm gonna demonstrate what I mean by diggable and non-diggable. So you can see on the right side here, these are diggable and these are not. Knowing this, rocks can spawn on top of these diggable ones and not the other ones. So if you'd like your rock to spawn in a cool looking zen garden, you can use the ones such as the different styles of dirt or the sand or of course grass. But rocks will not spawn on top of the tiles that are non-diggable. An example of this is in the footage here, where I lay down a sand path between the non-diggable paths, and then I wait until a rock appears, as you can see the sand beneath the rock. Then after all your rocks spawn in, you can change the paths around to create that vibe you're going for as seen here. I'm telling you this so early on in the video because if you don't place the path first, the path surrounding it will look like this rock on the right here. Okay, now that you've envisioned your garden a little bit, place non-diggable paths around in a pattern of where you want your rocks to eventually end up in the gaps, as I demonstrated here with this stone stool as an example. I also purposefully made a 3x3 square area surrounding the stool because you need a minimum of this distance for a rock to spawn. Anything in the way will interrupt the spawn. And when I mean in the way, I mean no items can be near where you want your rocks to spawn. Which brings us to step two, mannequins. This step is the absolute worst. So if you can get through this step, you can do anything. What you're going to need to do is open up your Nook phone, go to the custom designs app, and create a new pattern. Once in the creator mode thingy, create a design. I made mine entirely orange as you can see here, but you can make a smiley face or whatever you want. But be warned, you'll be seeing this for a very long time. Then when your art piece is done, press the plus button, give it some sort of name, then press the plus button again to finish your design. Next, go to the design you just made, press A, press display here, and select mannequin. Now, your first rock forming zombie has just spawned. This is just the first of many. You're gonna need a lot of mannequins. Like, a lot. Like so many mannequins, my word! Sorry, it just, there were so many mannequins. You'll know the struggle soon. Anyways, you're gonna wanna plan your next day off for about maybe two to five hours, placing mannequins in a four x four pattern, which you see here. And you do this because it disrupts the rocks from spawning. I recommend digging some holes between your first few mannequins to kind of build a base model of what they should all look like, then kind of eyeballing it from there, because you're going to need two spaces between each mannequin, and this is a good reference point to see if you're doing it right so far or not. And you're going to want to cover as much space as possible, so if your island is very well laid out, you have a lot of non-diggable paths, a lot of buildings, fences, great, that would mean less work for you. For me, I kind of did this when my island was still kind of early on in building, which meant I have to cover so much empty ground. So if you're doing this early on, you're going to know the struggle too. And if you're well established, well then, good for you. This may not take you two to five hours. It took me, honestly, like that long. It's crazy. But in the end, it'll be worth it. Alternatively, you could place a bunch of water spots instead of mannequins. However, this takes much longer in the long run, and you'll be hopping around a bear like a bunny. No offense, Gaston. Now, once your entire island starts to look like another episode of The Walking Dead, you're ready for step three, smashing your rocks. This part's the easy one. Just shake a tree, pick up the fruit, eat a fruit, and hit a rock with a shovel. And congratulations, you just broke your first rock. Now you can either break all your rocks all at once so you don't have to keep track of them all the time, 
or break one a day so you can keep farming them for resources. Step four, all you gotta do is wait. Each rock takes one whole in-game day to spawn, so you can either patiently wait six days for all of your rocks to spawn in, or you can time travel forward six days. Personally, I don't like time traveling in the game, but I recommend doing it for this because six days feels like a long time due to your island looking like a Call of Duty Zombies map. I was arrogant enough to not time travel. Don't be like me. Step five, removing all your mannequins. This part isn't too bad. All you gotta do is walk on your entire island, manually pick up all your mannequins lying around. Nah, I'm just playing. The process is actually much easier than this. All you need to do is open up your Nook phone, select the custom designs app, select the design which is shown on all your mannequins, then press change design. You don't need to alter the design by any means, just press plus again to get to the naming screen, then press plus again. Once you do that, all your mannequins will disappear all at once. Quick and easy cleanup. This is why we use mannequins over methods such as placing random items or creating those water patches. And congratulations, now your rock garden should be complete. Well, for most of you. If you're anything like me and still have rock spawning issues, I've got you covered. What I said in this video is found in various other YouTube videos, but there are other problems that players run into that are not covered in those other videos. That's why I'm making this improved rock guide video. Now, for the extra steps to ensure your rock garden forms to your design. Extra step number one, make sure your rocks are not nearby any water. As I said before, water patches interrupt rock spawning similar to how the mannequins work. So make sure there are no water spots near your desired spawn spot. If you have any water patches near your desired spawn location, just place some non-diggable paths in its place until your rock spawns in. Now don't worry, you can place water tiles by your rocks afterwards if you'd like, as seen here. Extra step number two, make sure your flower areas are surrounded by mannequins. I had a rock spawn here by this mannequin, and it made me wait a whole other day. Flowers may look pretty, but they can be fiercely interrupted by your rock spawning mojo. Flowers act like non-diggable paths, where a rock cannot spawn on top of the flower, but a rock may spawn next to one. So be sure to spread your mannequins generously around your flowers. Extra step number three, make sure your rocks are clearly visible. As you can see my rock garden here, it is actually not possible to spawn a rock here in its current state. The rocks are not very visible from this point of view, which obstructs rocks from spawning. A Reddit thread that I will post in the description below says that you need approximately four to five spaces clear of any item, tree, building, cliffs, etc. from where your rocks are to spawn for visibility. I completely demolished my cliffs and placed non-diggable paths where they were before as reference to know where to rebuild them later. So make sure your rocks are clearly visible, otherwise the game will not spawn the rock where you desire it to be. This is also why fossils in those golden spots in the ground do not appear behind buildings and such. So if you have a building here, that kind of sucks, you have to move it, get your rocks to spawn, and then you can move it back later. Same with the cliffs, and same with items. Just move everything, you can put it back later, don't worry, just make sure your rocks are clearly visible. Have I said that enough yet? Hope so. Also, one quick little tip. When you're checking your rock garden every day, make sure there are no weeds where you want your rock to spawn, because that will prevent your rock from spawning. You do not want a weed to interrupt your rock spawn. It's a very painful defeat, and I don't want that to happen to you. Extra step number four, grids. This step is particularly controversial, so take it with a grain of salt. That being said, as you look at my island's map, you can see these thin white squares all over it. Within each square is what we call a grid. The Reddit post I have in the description says, a maximum of three rocks can appear within each grid. As you can see on my map, I'm located just under my garden and you can see I have three rocks borderline under one of the grids, so it might just barely count. Now although I say only a maximum of three can spawn within a grid, other Reddit users claim a maximum of four can be within a grid. And some say the grid doesn't even matter at all for the rocks to spawn. Now you can see why this is controversial. I will update the description box below if I find any news on this matter. But until then, I suggest designing your rock garden so that three rocks, at most, appear in one grid at a time. And 
and that is it. Did you get all that? I hope this video helped. I struggled for almost three weeks trying to get my rocks to spawn where it should have taken only six days because the other videos I watched didn't include details like this one. Let me know in the comments below if this video helped you form your rock garden, if you have any tips I may have left out, and especially comment any questions you might have that went unanswered. Thank you so much for watching, I hope to see you in another video.